Yes, I love you. How are you? You all right? So nice to see you. Oh, How's it going? So happy you to good? see you. I'm happy to be here. But let's face facts. You are at the top of your game. Your show has grown into a very important business for the network and for digital. And you have offshoot and you, you're literally on the top and there's that thing, there is that brave, bold move that people take where they go, we're at the best place, we're on top and we're done. <laughs> when do you know to walk away Look, it has, it's not easy in any way to, to walk away from something that is so... I mean, I'll, I'll never work in a better environment than the one I work in now. Nothing about leaving the show it was to do with not enjoying it. I love it. But the truth is, it became a very easy decision because I always knew it was an adventure and I never ever considered it to be the final destination. And when I was shooting the show Mammals that you're so lovely about, uh, two summers ago, and one day uh, I was filming on a Sunday and I came downstairs, it was about 6 a.m. and my son who was 10 at the time was sat on the stairs and he said, are you working today? And I said, I am, and he said, I thought, but it's Sunday, and I said, I know, buddy, but this, the schedule's just so all over the place, we've just got to get it done, because I only have a tiny amount of time before we have to go back and do the show. And uh, his face just kind of dropped, and I got in the car, and uh, I called my wife, Jules, and I said, I've realised, best case scenario, best case scenario, we have six more summers where Max is like, even remotely wants to be around us. And I cannot waste another one. So really the choice was to go, well, if I want to do this other work, that cannot be at the expense of our children, our family. And that is really all it comes down to. I will be a mess on that last show. I will cry my eyes out, but I will know in my core that the best thing for me and the best thing for us as a family is to put down some roots in London and it feels absolutely right in every single way. And that might be the best advice there could be. Well, listen to this. So, my, my son's 11, OK? And, you know, anyone here who's got an 11-year-old child will understand completely that there is... There is there's, there's changes afoot, you know? There's, <laughs> there's changes happening. Uh-huh. And I, um, <laughs> I sat him down the other day. I went up to his bedroom and I said, uh, he'd had a real strop about something. I can't even remember what it was. But it was a, you know, march away. <laughs> and I, I said, feel like I still have I, go on. <laughs> I went up and I said to him, I said, can I ask you some questions? He said, sure. I said, uh, do you think I love you? And he said, yeah. And I said, do you think I would ever do anything to intentionally upset you? And he said, no. I said, do you think I am if only a little bit, somewhat smart and wise. He went, yeah. <laughs> I said, and do you think I've changed much in the last four years? He said, no. I said, good. They are all the right answer. You scored 100%. I said, because here's the thing. Here's the thing. In a, over the next few years, I promise you, you're going to think I don't love you. You're going to think I am intentionally trying to hurt or upset you. You're going to think I am not smart, that I don't know anything. And you're going to think that I've changed. And I need you to know that you've changed and I haven't changed and you need to change. And all we're trying to do is support you and love you 
through these changes. But I need you to remember this chat now because it's going to come up a few times over the next few years. And he went, cool, good parent. Yeah. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.